Like and we are online on Facebook. And I really held my attention there to make sure that I didn't go, ah, we're online on Facebook. So for those of you watching on Facebook, um, welcome to the online Gurdjieff group meeting. It's November the 10th, 2019. And today's gonna be a really, really interesting meeting. Um, I'm going to be going through uh, major parts of Chapter 9 from In Search of the Miraculous. I'm not going to go through it all. Uh, today, my focus is going to be on where we leak energy, where we waste energy as the human machine, and the nature and practice of the first conscious shock, which is self-remembering. Next week, I'm going to do the second conscious shock. Uh, try to explain it as best that I can. That's the big mysterious one. But uh, this one uh, is going to be very interesting. Uh, now, before I begin, um, let's just start. Um, Angelica, it looks pretty dark there, but you're in Sao Paulo. It's, uh, um, shouldn't it be daytime and light coming in your windows? Uh, uh, rain. Today rain. is huh. raining. 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 Dark, dark, rain, dark, dark huh? yes. Okay. Um, so how are things in Brazil? I hear uh, Lula, or Lulu, Lulu, uh, was Lula. released from prison. No, uh, things in Brazil are um, crazy. <laughs> uh, last days, the Supreme Court uh, took a very crazy decision and some uh, criminal people are free from the prison. And for me, it was um, a good moment to practice no identification because uh, all this um, um, this collective tension tension né, from all Brazil is in the air after we, we know that uh, 5,000 very dangerous people are now free in the street. And uh, there was a moment I stopped to read and hear all this uh, new, news, news and observe myself and realize that I could not be identified with this. Otherwise, I should be uh, depressing. Uh, I will fall absolutely into this collective hell and also jumping to one into the fear and it for me is very important this moment to um, focus on my art the food the dog my day life and do not identify with this political because I am not this government, I am not this fear, I am not this depression, and this all these things can make us feel, it's a poor English, but make us feel very bad. And uh, it's the correct moment for me to practice what Mr. Gurdjieff said. I am not in a monastery, Alan. I live here in one very big city and I must practice this here just now, okay? And I don't have time to read the Bhagavad Gita, this and that. I must be um, tranquil. And this was for me important last days. Unfortunately, the situation Politica is crazy, mm -hmm. but uh, 
I cannot uh, jump into this frequency. I will be mad as much people are now. That's all. Yeah, I believe the, if I got it right, the Brazilian Supreme Court or judge said that people awaiting, um, who have been convicted, but their sentence is in appeal, uh, they can't be held in jail, which means your former president, Lulu, it has been released from jail and he's going to marshal a lot of opposition to Bolsonaro and the other thing. But being in that country, it's actually very similar, not quite as bad as Karen uh, in uh, Mexico with, you know, the, the actual drug lords and the gangs roaming around there killing people. And uh, Mr. Gurdjieff said that these are good times for those who want to work on themselves, but it because it's really difficult and so the harder the conditions the more productive the work um your microphone's mute karen i'm going to just try and unmute it or you might have to unmute it on your end um how, how are things in how are things in mexico uh, well they're pretty awful i guess you heard about the slaying of the mormon people now, yeah the there's children more to that story than the press has brought out yeah. we're sure there was some connection there but locally, the murders are horrendous. Here in this small town that used to be the most peaceful place on earth, there are several murders every week of punks killing punks, but they do a drive-by or they kill them and then th throw them on the side of the road. It's really barbaric, that's all I can say. Yeah. Um. Just try to remember yourself and try to not identify. Um, Mr. Gurdjieff said when things like this happen, sometimes two planets up there are just coming a little too close. And it creates all of this tension down here and they're machines killing machines. Um, when we think about, you know, he was writing or talking to Uspensky during the First World War, where millions upon millions of people died. Um, you know, it's, humanity can be very horrific. Um, so just try not to identify, try to just step back from it, do your own practice. He also said it's a good opportunity to really practice um, disidentifying because you can see how you just get caught up in it. Um, I feel very blessed to be in Canada. Even though we've got a little bit of tension up here, it's nothing like uh, other places in the world. Um, okay, uh, Ian, how are you doing down there? Um, doing well. Doing Portland, well. Oregon. Um, yeah, the time change has got me a little screwed up. It's way darker. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, nothing major to report. Things carry on. Okay. Um, thankfully, not as much violence as I hear in places. Yeah. Let's we'll see, see what happens. Okay. Uh, Brian, how are you doing in Scottsdale, Arizona? Uh, I'm doing well. Um, over the past week, um, one thing that's been repeatedly going through my mind is um, from the uh, 82 piece of advice to Gertrude's granddaughter or to his daughter. Oh, his daughter, yeah. Um, one of those is um, if you're trying to decide between doing or not doing, take the risk of doing. And um, there's a, um, comp a kickboxing competition that's coming to town next month. And um, I've been training uh, uh, kickboxing and jujitsu for a couple years. And um, I've always thought about competing. And my coach finally said, um, you know, he thinks that I'm ready to compete in it. And you know, I was kind of going back and forth. There's a risk, you know, there's the risk of getting hurt and the risk of, um, I don't know, there's some risk involved, but I, over the past week, that line just continues running through my mm -hmm. head. Uh, and it's probably a, enough to push me to sign up for it. Um, but I don't know. I found that really interesting. I mean, there's actually also at a certain point where doing and not doing um people try to do too much uh, i know women and particularly women who have families they get up in the morning and from when they get up to when they go to bed it's do 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 hustle and i tell them you've got to learn how to not do 
Um, you've got to learn how to take some time to breathe and focus on yourself. Um, however, at a certain level, it's more important to do. But once you get accomplished at the potential of doing, not doing becomes just as important. So learning how to balance them. But I think you're right in terms of the kickboxing and competing and everything, because that's pushing you way out of your comfort zone. And part of doing is to push yourself out of your comfort zone and do things that don't make you feel comfortable whatsoever. Um, yeah, I do. I do sometimes worry because I feel like I do so much stuff that um, I'm not staying as focused as I should be because I have all these different interests that uh, keep me really busy. But like yesterday, I made a point to do mm -hmm. nothing at all. And I just um, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, tried to stay as um, basically do nothing. I didn't even do it. Yeah. So then like, I kind of like, I feel like that builds my energy for the rest of the week. If I could take one day where I do as little as possible. Okay. That's a good idea. Um, or even an hour a day, if you can, or half an hour, just to consciously be present in the moment and not do, um, so today, um, I'm, I'm not going to go through my normal uh, routine of doing uh, inner exercise. However, I'm going to uh, pull up on the screen um, the, you know, we work for ourselves, we work for mankind, we work for the earth herself. Oops. And to recognize that, you know, I wish to be, I can be. I have the right to be. I have the ability to be. I swear to myself that this will never be for my personal profit, but to help others. I wish to be to help others. This is to be understood as a vow. Mr. Gurdjieff's words, uh, they've been translated into English. They were spoken to one of his French students. Um, but today I'm going to be talking about uh, major parts of Chapter 9 from In Search of the Miraculous. I remember uh, when I read In Search of the Miraculous the first time, Chapter 9 just so overwhelmed me. It's like my eyes read it and uh, there was just too much information there. Now I have to say I've read In Search of the Miraculous probably 15 to 20 times but I've probably read chapter nine closer to 50 times. People have said, oh, you have a photographic memory. And I go, no, I don't. I've read it and I've read it and I've read it and I've read it again. And it's really important. I'm not gonna go so much into the ancient science of it with all the charts and uh, the transformations. I'm going to focus more on how this impacts us. Now, self-remembering is mischaracterized in In Search of the Miraculous. I'll talk about this when I read through certain passages. Um, the word that was obviously translated from Russian by Uspensky into English, he uses the word feel. And the word should actually be translated as sense. Because the most important dimension of self-remembering and the, the the building block the foundation stone is the ability to sense your body as one organic whole so i'm going to try and i'm going to ask you and those uh watching on facebook those who are watching on youtube i'm not going to lead us through any process as best you can right now just try to sense your body as one organic whole. Uh, Mr. Gurdjieff called it the sensation of myself or the sensation of self. It's the awareness of our physical body from the bottom of our feet all the way to the top of our head. This sensation of self. You know, the sensation of my body from side to side, from outside in, inside out. It's this sort of full awareness of my body or as full an awareness of my body as I can achieve here and now in this moment. And the more we practice this, the more we actually coat and create something inside ourselves that grows this ability to become aware of our physical body as one organic whole. 
So if you can't do it, if you can't hold on to it, just try to do as much of it as you can. This is the most important preliminary building stone, foundation stone for self-remembering. It's the awareness of myself here in this moment, the awareness of my physical self here in this moment. And I noticed Hisham uh, just uh, joined us from Morocco and North Africa. I'm just explaining briefly the process of self-remembering. And I'll go into detail. Uh, in this show or meeting. Um, that's why I don't want to go through my regular doing a, a, a long exercise because I'm going to try and cover a lot of material today. So just try to become aware of your physical body. Try to become aware of your organic self as much as you can. And then perhaps observe my hands moving and be aware that your eyes are observing my hands moving. And then become aware of my voice. Observe your ears hearing my voice. And then become aware of any smells that may be around you, your own particular scent, perhaps, or the scent of the air in the room. It's morning early for some of you. Perhaps you have a cup of coffee. Uh, become aware of what you can smell. Even become aware of the taste in your mouth. Now, sensing your body, become aware of your eyes, seeing my hands move. Sensing your body, become aware of your ears, hearing my voice. Sensing your body, become aware of your nose, receiving olfactory information, smells. Sensing your body, becoming aware of your taste buds, tasting. And this is self-remembering as defined in this chapter, chapter nine. It, uh, I will go through it. Uh, as I go through the chapter, but try to self-remember as much as you can throughout this meeting. Try to really hold your focus on your body. If that's all you can do, just do that. It's the most important awareness. It's the foundational awareness. And if you can hold this awareness of your body, the sensation of yourself, and become aware of what's going on, um, oops, I'll just mute the others. Uh, become aware of your self and what you see, hear, smell, taste, but become aware of receiving those impressions. And I will explain this. So I'm going to uh, pull up and share the screen. Um, so I titled this Fixing the Human Machine, Alchemy and the First conscious shock. Uh, this is an incredible chapter. There's so much more that can be said about it. This all comes from chapter nine of In Search of the Miraculous. These words are Mr. Gurdjieff's words as quoted by P.D. Uspensky. Um, I don't want to go into the first bit of the chapter, but you know he says the scale obtained in this way from one, this is hydrogen one, to hydrogen 3072 can serve us for the study of man. This kind of definition matter of matters enables us to classify them in the order of their relation to life and the functions of our organism. Let us begin with hydrogen 768. This hydrogen is defined as food. In other words, hydrogen 768 includes all the substances which can serve as food for man. Substances which cannot serve as food, such as a piece of wood, refer to hydrogen 1536 or 1536. A piece of iron to hydrogen 3072. On the other hand, a thin matter with poor nutritious or nutri properties will be nearer to hydrogen 384. And someone asked him, and this isn't in search of the miraculous, but not here. Someone asked him, you know, what is the difference between, say, two levels? And he replied, I love this answer, the difference between a raw potato and a cooked potato. 
a raw potato is hydrogen 1,536. A cooked potato is hydrogen 768. So through the cooking of certain foods, we actually raise their essence or food level, their cosmic property up one level. So that's a way to understand it. The difference between a raw potato and a baked potato. A raw potato is hydrogen 1,536. A baked potato is hydrogen 768. Hydrogen 384 will be defined as water. Hydrogen 192 is the air of our atmosphere we breathe. Hydrogen 96 is represented by rarefied gases, which man cannot breathe, but which play an important part in his life. And further, this is the matter of animal magnetism, of emanations from the human body, so we could include our atmosphere, of N rays, and I just put in brackets here a hypothesized form of radiation described by. French phys physicist Prosper René Blondot in 1903. Um, it's kind of been discounted now of hormones, vitamins, and so on. In other words, with hydrogen 96 ends what is called matter or what is regarded as matter by our physics and chemistry. So Scientists and physicists can only study up to world 96, up to hydrogen 96. Hydrogen 96 also includes matters that are almost imperceptible to our chemistry or perceptible only by their trace, traces or results, often merely presumed by some and denied by others. Hydrogen's 48. 24, 12, and 6 are matters unknown to physics and chemistry, matters of our psychic and spiritual life on different levels. And here, as an aside, if we take St. Paul's soma, psyche, pneuma, body, soul, and spirit, or body, mind, and spirit, it's been translated many ways, soma is world 48 psyche is world 24 pneuma is world 12. so when he's talking about matters of our psychic and spiritual life psychic refers to those parts of us that are composed and deal with hydrogen 24 and spiritual those parts of us that deal with hydrogen 12 using the schema of saint paul in the new testament with soma and soma is hydrogen 48 the physical body but not the physical body as can be analyzed by science altogether in examining the table of hydrogens it must always be remembered that each hydrogen of this table includes an enormous number of different substances connected together by one and the same function in our organism representing a definite cosmic group. Just give me a second and uh, I'm gonna pull up another uh, familiar. So here on the left where my uh, cursor is, um, I'll just uh, get the drawing tool, 768, uh, 384, these represent cosmic groups. So anything composed of hydrogen 384 represents a common uh, or three uh, common cosmic group. Anything that you know represent is formed of hydrogen 768 represents a common cosmic group. Now we might not be able to eat all things made of hydrogen 768, but they all represent a cosmic group. Uh, whoops, let me I go back to where I was. Um, so by cosmic group, the levels 768, uh, 364, 192, 96, 48, uh, 24, 12, 6, they represent the cosmic group. 
Ordinary chemistry does not take into consideration all of the properties of a substance. Namely, it does not take into consideration cosmic properties. The chemistry of which we speak here studies matter on a different basis from ordinary chemistry and takes into consideration not only the chemical and physical, but also the psychic and cosmic properties of matter. The chemistry or alchemy, uh, this chemistry or alchemy regards matter, first of all, from the point of view of its functions, which determine its place in the universe and its relation to other matters. And then from the point of view of its relation to man and man's substance. So coming back to this uh, diagram, let me just uh, bring it up. So we can see on the left, absolute unchanging archangels, angels, man, vertebrates, and vertebrates, plants, minerals, metals, and whoops, I guess uh, this is a different diagram. Um, we can use other words. We can use uh, the absolute. Uh, number three, all worlds. Number six, all suns. Number 12, our sun. Number 24, our planetary realm. Number 48, the earth. Number 96, the moon. So, uh, so from the point of view, we can, you know, make all of these connections uh, between something that's going on within us there's a part of us that is at the level of hydrogen 12, at the level of the sun, uh, using that other diagram at the level of the angels. Um, by an atom of a substance is meant a small quantity of a given substance that retains all its chemical, cosmic, and psychic properties, because in addition to its cosmic properties, every substance also possesses psychic properties that is a certain degree of intelligence. Um, I'm just going to stop sharing for one second. So, a green pepper. I can eat this green pepper as it is. This green pepper is hydrogen 768. But contained within this green pepper is hydrogen 364. Also contained within it is hydrogen 192, hydrogen 48, hydrogen 12, hydrogen, uh, or hydrogen 24, hydrogen 12. This is on the octave of food. So we can go DO 768, Ray uh, 364, Mi 192, Fa um, 96, So. 48, LA 24, and C12. We are not manufacturing C12 in our body. We are like this mining operation and we are extracting C12 from this green pepper when we eat it. It goes through a transformational process and we extract all of these different substances that are already contained within the green pepper. Um, Doe 768, it goes into our mouth, it meets the higher the saliva juices, it gets transformed to Ray 364, it goes into our stomach, it meets with the gastric juices, the higher in our stomach, it's transformed into Me 192, and at that point, it would come to a stop, but the octave of air is added. And through the octave of air, it gives the digestive process the ability to continually transform this. So from me 192 to the liver, seat of anger, for those of you who are aware of the psychological implications of liver, that's world 96. It's on the level of the moon. Uh, and then it goes to the cerebral hemispheres of our brain, uh, which is hydrogen 48, which is on the level of the earth. Then it goes to our cerebellum, where it transforms, it extracts uh, uh, LA24, which we use to sense our hands and our body. And then it extracts uh, C12 in our gonads, in our reproductive organs. Um, so this, it's already contained within there. We have these uh, amazing mining operations 
within our body that are devoted to extracting these substances and using these substances. Um, the table of hydrogens makes it possible to examine all substances making up man's organism from the point of view of their relation to different planes of the universe. And as every function of man is a result of the action of definite substances, and as each substance is connected with a definite plane in the universe, this fact enables us to establish the relation between man's functions and the planes of the universe. So, Mr. Gurdjieff said you cannot study psychology without studying cosmology, and you cannot study cosmology without studying psychology. And I've talked about this before. Um, there's a phrase that people attribute to the Greeks. It's much older than the Greeks. It comes from the Egyptians. It probably came to the, from the advanced civilization that formed uh, ancient Egypt. And uh, this phrase is, know thyself, except they always cut it at that point. It's actually not a phrase. It's a formula. And it's, know thyself, and thou shalt know the gods in the universe. And the reason I say it's a formula, because it can be flipped around. Know the gods in the universe, and thou shalt know thyself. We can't study ourself or the universe in isolation. We have to study them together. Where is the sun in me? Where is the planetary realm? Where is the earth? Where is the moon? They all, we, parts of ourselves exist on all of those levels. So understanding this is, you know, very important. This is the ancient science of psychology and cosmology. You know, psychocosmologists or cosmopsychologists. Um, so that's a very important part of chapter nine. It's a very important part of understanding this whole process. And this is all related to hydrogens, and it's all related to the science, but I wanted to strip it to its core meaning. Um, so after hydrogens, G, Mr. Gurdjieff, at once went further. And this is where it gets really fascinating for us. We want to do, but he began the next lecture. In everything we do, we are tied and limited by the amount of energy produced by our organism. Every function, every state, every thought, every emotion require certain definite energy, a certain definite substance. We come to the conclusion that we must remember ourselves, but we can remember ourselves only if we have in us the energy for self-remembering. We can study something, understand or feel something, only if we have the energy for understanding, feeling, or studying. So here, another aside. Every thought that we think, every feeling that we feel, every single process that goes on within us, is a result of substances. It's a result of substances that have a chemical property, but they also have a cosmic property, a psychic property. All of these things are within us. So to, to recognize that we are actually machines, that we are designed for the transformation of energies, and everything, everything, our negative moods, our states of identification, anger, upsetness, worry, excessive movement, all require fuel. They are all the result of a chemical process that is going on within our body. Um, <clears throat> what then is a man to do when he begins to realize that he has not enough energy to attain the aims he has set before him? And again, try to be aware of your body, try to sense your whole body as one organic whole, and be aware of your eyes reading this information, seeing the white, yellow, black, seeing perhaps the borders, the edges of your uh, you know, iPad or tablet or computer, whatever you're watching this on. 
You know, the answer to this is that every normal man has quite enough energy to begin work on himself. It is only necessary to learn how to save the greater part of the energy we possess for useful work instead of wasting it unproductively. And I've added these numbers. Um, I've talked about George I.D. saying that there are seven different qualities of sleep. There are, he, Mr. Gurdjieff, lists a lot more. And it's not sleep. This is where our human machine, so if we think of our machine like a, a, a wagon or like a, a motor car, and, you know, the oil hasn't been changed, the oil is dirty, um, the brake pads are wearing thin, and so we're starting to wear down the mechanism in the wheels, and we're not putting the right gas in the car. Maybe we should be using high octane, and we're using a low octane. And so right now, he's just talking about the human machine as we are born how we waste and just misuse all of this energy as we are. We don't have to step up to the next level to begin this process of working on ourselves. Energy is spent chiefly, and this is wasting energy, on unnecessary and unpleasant emotions. To a the expectation of unpleasant things, possible and impossible. Alan? So, yes? Uh, at least on my side, I'm not seeing the text. Oh, sorry. Um, no okay. Thank you, Ian. Um, <laughs> this technology, I am 62, so, you know, I was 24 when I got my first computer. I didn't grow up with them. Um, energy is spent chiefly on one, unnecessary and unpleasant emotions. Two, the expectation of unpleasant things, possible and impossible. A lot of times we're worried about the sky falling in, and, you know, I know people in the environmental movement who are afraid of running out of breath. Um, we're not there at this point in the world, and it's, it is possible, but not right now. It's something they're imagining in their mind. Um, three, bad moods. Four, unnecessary haste. Five, nervousness. Six, irritability. Seven, imagination. Eight, daydreaming. Uh, and so on. Energy is wasted, nine, on the wrong work of centers, on 10, unnecessary tension of the muscles, all out of proportion to the work produced, on 11, perpetual chatter, which absorbs an enormous amount of energy, uh, on the 12, interest continually taken in things happening around us or to other people, and having, in fact, no interest whatsoever on 13, the constant waste of the force of attention, and so on and so on. In beginning to struggle with all of these habitual sides of his life, a man saves an enormous amount of energy, and with the help of this energy, he can easily begin the work of self-study and self-perfection. Further on, however, the production becomes more difficult, having to a certain extent balanced his machine and ascertained for himself that it produces much more energy than he expected. A man nevertheless comes to the conclusion that this energy is not enough, and that if he wishes to continue his work, he must increase the amount of energy produced. The study of the working of the human organism shows this to be quite possible. The human organism represents a chemical factory planned for the, planned for the possibility of a very large output. But in the ordinary conditions of life, the output of this factory never reaches the full production possible to it because only a small part of the machinery is used, which produces only that quantity of material necessary to maintain its own existence. 
factory work of this kind is obviously uneconomic in the highest degree. The factory actually produces nothing. All its machinery, all its elaborate equipment actually serve no purpose at all in that it maintains only with difficulty in its own existence. The work of the factory consists in transforming one kind of matter into another, namely the coarser matters in the cosmic sense into finer ones. The factory receives as raw material from the outer world a number of coarse hydrogens and transforms them into finer hydrogens by means of a whole series of complicated alchemical processes. But in the ordinary conditions of life, the production by the human factory of the finer hydrogens, in which from the point of view of the possibility of higher states of consciousness and the work of higher centers, we are particularly interested, is insufficient and they are all wasted on the existence of the factory itself. If we could succeed in bringing the production up to its possible maximum, we should then begin to save fine hydrogens. Then the whole of the body, all the tissues, all the cells would become saturated with these fine hydrogens, which would gradually settle in them, crystallizing in a special way. This crystallization of the fine hydrogens would gradually bring the whole organism onto a higher level, onto a higher plane of being. However, this cannot happen in ordinary conditions because the factory expends all that it produces. So again, just try to bring yourself back to the sensation of self. Try to become aware of your eyes, seeing the image on the screen, your ears hearing my voice, your nose smelling, your mouth tasting, while also remaining aware of the sensation of yourself. This is actually a higher process that it's the second conscious shock. Now there is a whole, there's a big controversy in the Gurdjieffian community. So many people take the view that Mr. Gurdjieff traveled here and there and there and there and cobbled his system together and can be said to be the creator of his system going to traveling to Central Asia, North Africa, Ethiopia, India, Tibet, and he put a system together. I've always said that this is wrong. And the reason I've said this is wrong is because of chapter nine. Chapter nine is an ancient science. It's the ancient science of, of self-transformation. It's the ancient science of self-evolution. And if you understand what he's talking about in chapter 9, if you really get it, you will understand the entire system revolves around this ancient science. And I have not found this ancient science in Hinduism. I must admit I haven't done a lot of studying of Tibetan Buddhism, but uh, I haven't found it in Buddhism. I haven't found it in Sufism. I haven't found it anywhere. The only place this science of human transformation is outlined this explicitly and this clearly is by Mr. Gurdjieff. And in particular, what he taught P.D. Uspensky between 1915 and 1917, as recounted in In Search of the Miraculous. This is the ancient science of transformation. And understanding human transformation, understanding ourself at different levels of the cosmos, understanding ourself at, with different cosmic and psychic properties within ourself. As I said earlier, this is not just 768. Contained much less in this is 364, uh, hydrogen 192. So, DO 768, RAY 364. So, when I'm using the musical notes, I'm identifying it, in a sense, chemically. The numbers represent the cosmic uh, connection. So anything at the level of the hydrogen 768 contains the elements that are here. In particular, because this is food, it's DO 768, Ray 364, uh, Me 196. 
So this contains at the same level, Mi 196, we can talk about air as Do 196. So there are actual different substances, air and the substance that's contained within this at that level are at the same level cosmically, but one is Ray 364 in the, or Ray, uh, or Mi 192 and the other is Do 192. And then contained within this is, if we move up from me, we go to Fa 96. Uh, within air, it's Ray 96 at the same level. And then we come to So 48. Within this, that's, we can extract that through the digestive process. And uh, Do Ray, um, it's Ray 96. In the octave of air, we also extract that from the air. The air doesn't just contain uh, Do 192. It also contains uh, Ray 96, Mi 48. This contains Sol 48. So we can make these connections at the different level. When we get up to Mi 96 and uh, Fa 96. So Fa 96 in the octave of food. Me 96 on the octave of air, we're also talking about the level of the moon. So we can begin to connect this to those cosmic properties. Uh, the entire system, what Mr. Gurdjieff taught, everything he did with his students, all of those seemingly, you know, they call them, you know, the crazy wisdom, uh, yelling at students, pushing them, doing all sorts of things like that, all of it can be understood in terms of this ancient science of transformation. Um, this is the heart of the teachings, chapter nine. Uh, I've told so many people to ignore chapter nine when they first read it, not ignore it, read it, but understand that when they first read it, they won't understand it. I've been now working on understanding chapter nine for at this point, 38 years, and I'm gonna share uh, again. Um, Whoops. Learn to separate the fine from the coarse. This principle from the emerald tablets of Hermes Trismegistrus. And notice the tri at the beginning means three. Um, the law of three, uh, putting that in the name. And if a man learns to separate that, whoops, there's a mistake there. The fine from the course, that is, if he brings the production of the fine hydrogens to its possible maximum, he will by this very fact create for himself the possibility of an inner growth which can be brought about by no other means. And here, you know, we can go back to that list, and I've got it at the end of... Uh, this presentation, if we can get back to it, you know, excessive movement, chatter, negative moods, fear of things possible and impossible. And, you know, if we can clean the machine up, this will necessarily lead to a, a degree of inner growth because the factory will then be working. It's like we have this massive factory and everything the factory produces just maintains the factory. Maybe the people are yelling at each other across the assembly line and you know they're doing things too quickly and so the products that they're producing are deformed and they have to be recalled and you know the factory is not doing its job, it's just maintaining itself. Inner growth, the growth of the inner bodies of man, the astral, the mental, and so on, is a material process completely analogous to the growth of the physical body. In order to grow, a child must have good food. His organism must be in a healthy condition to prepare from this food the material necessary for the growth of tissues. The same thing is necessary for the astral body. Out of the various kinds of foods entering it, the organism must produce the substances necessary for the growth of the astral body. Moreover, the astral body requires for its growth the same substances as those necessary to maintain the physical body, only in greater quantities. And here, you know, again, the green pepper uh, contains within it 
elements of hydrogen 48, elements of world 48, or 24, elements of world 24. It contains on the octave of food, LA24. LA24 is the molecule involved in self-sensing. Anytime, you know, even just to be aware of the thumb on our right hand requires LA24. Uh, LA24 is contained within food. It's contained within the food we eat, and we need to be able to learn how to extract this energy properly and in sufficient quantities. If the physical organ begins to produce a sufficient quantity of these fine substances, and the astral body within it becomes formed, this astral organism will require for its maintenance less of these substances than it required during its growth. The surplus from these substances can then be used for the formation and growth of the mental body. Uh, this is uh, the self, the real eye at world 12. Uh, the help of the, uh, the mental body, the same substances that feed the astral body. But of course, the growth of the mental body will require more of these substances than the growth and feeding of the astral body. The surplus of the substance left over from the feeding of the mental body will go to the growth of the fourth body. But in all cases, the surplus will have to be very large. All the fine substances necessary for the growth and feeding of the higher bodies must be produced within the physical organism, and the physical organism is able to produce them provided the human factory is working properly and economically. All the substances necessary for the maintenance of the life of the organism for psychic work that is, for the growth of the astral body, the Kesjian body, the growth beyond the physical body to the level of the planetary realm. All the substances necessary for the maintenance of the organism, for the psychic work, for the higher functions of consciousness and the growth of higher bodies are produced by the organism from the food which enters it from the outside. So as I said, the green pepper contains all of those higher substances in it and our body must act like this mining operation and mine the substances, derive them. The human organism receives three kinds of food. The ordinary food we eat, the air we breathe, our impressions. It is not difficult to agree that air is a kind of food for the organism, but in what way uh, impressions can be food may appear at first difficult to understand. We must remember that with every external impression, that is what you are seeing, hearing, smelling, and tasting. With every external impression, whether it takes the form of sound or vision or smell, we receive from outside a certain amount of energy, a certain number of vibrations. This energy which enters the organism from outside is food. So your ears are feeding on the sound waves that are entering your ears. Your eyes are feeding on the photons and the particles of light that are entering the photoreceptors in your eyes. Your nose is receiving vibrations, substances, enemy, energies coming in through your nose. Moreover, as it has been said before, energy cannot be transmitted without matter. If an external impression brings external energy with it into the organism, it means that external matter also enters, which feeds the organism in the full meaning of the term. So that passage earlier, science and what we can physically observe, you know, the limit of that is world 92. But there is energy, there's a substance that is entering us through our vision. There is a substance that is entering us through our hearing. There is a substance that is entering us through the, the, uh, uh, the olfactory receptors in our nose. There's a substance entering us through the taste buds in our mouth. These are substances. They are substances on a level that science is not able to observe. But it's a form of matter. It's a very rarefied form of matter beyond 
the observation of normal science, but it's still matter that's coming into us. This is not just energy. We are feeding on what comes in through our eyes, ears, nose, and taste buds. For its normal existence, the organism must receive all three kinds of food, that is, physical food, air, and impressions. The organism cannot exist on one or even two kinds of foods. All three are required. But the relation of these foods to one another and their significance for the organism is not the same. The organism can exist for a comparatively long time without a supply of fresh physical food. Cases of starvation are known lasting for over 60 days when the organism lost none of its vitality and recovered very quickly as soon as it began to take food. Of course, starvation of this kind cannot be considered as complete since all cases of such artificial starvation people have taken water. Nevertheless, even without water, a man can live without food for several days. Without air, he can exist only for a few minutes, not more than two or three. As a rule, a man dies after being four minutes without air. Without impressions, a man cannot live a single moment. If the flow of impressions were to be stopped in some way, or if the organism were deprived of its capacity for receiving impressions, it would immediately die. And just bring yourself back to the sensation of your body, aware of your eyes receiving this visual information, your ears receiving the sound, your nose smelling. The flow of impressions coming into us from outside is like a driving belt communicating motion to us. The principal mo motor for us is nature, the surrounding world. Nature transmits to us through our impressions, the energy by which we live and move and have our being. If the inflow of this energy is arrested, our machine will immediately stop working. So here he is saying that impressions, we can't live one second without receiving impressions from the external world. Nature through our impressions, what we see, hear, smell and taste is continually feeding us. Thus of the three kinds of food, the most important for us is impressions. Although it stands to reason that a man cannot exist for long on impressions alone. Impressions and air enable a man to exist a little longer. Impressions, air, and physical food enable the organism to live to the end of its normal life, in, end of its normal term of life, and to produce the substances necessary, not only for the maintenance of life, but for the creation and growth of higher bodies. The three kinds of food and the digestion of hydrogen 768 and hydrogen 192 in the organism with the help of one mechanical shock. So food comes in, the green pepper I have in my hand on the corner of the screen comes in at hydrogen 768, at dose 768. It meets with the higher within us, the saliva, the chewing of our mouth, and, uh, and now you've got to understand the mining process means that the higher is taken out of the lower and the lower stuff, and there's even lower stuff than 768 in this, generally goes out in our excrement or it's used in lower processes. So the higher is extracted and it also leaves behind the lower. So when hydrogen 364 is extracted from this, it leaves a residue uh, my math is bad, I don't have this one memorized, but the 1,500 and whatever hydrogen below is, is extracted out as well, and it goes down lower, and then that goes out, say, perhaps as our um, excrement. Um, but do not want any two, or do not want 768, Ray 364, Me 192, and then it comes to a stop, and it requires outside energy. And the outside energy, the first mechanical shock. Nature gives us the mechanical shock, and DO 192, the octave of air, starts. So we can see here on the left side, this is a sleeping person. Um, DO 
768 Ray, 384 uh, Mi, 192. It comes to a stop and we require the energy of air to come in with at the same vibration with a certain intensity that allows the human organism to continue working and moving up. But dough stops. It doesn't get transformed within us. Nature does not need this. And that's why in this left diagram, this is man as, not man as he is, this is natural man as he should be, a normal man, but no one you know is normal. They're filled with dark moods and ego and negative emotions and unnecessary chatter and all of those things. So people are a dirty machine version of what's on the left. Um, there is, however, a possibility of increasing the output, that is of enabling the octave of air and the impression octave to develop further. For this purpose, it is necessary to create a special kind of artificial shock at the point where the beginning of the third octave is arrested. That's at Do 48 of the octave of impressions. <coughs> at the point where the beginning of the third octave is arrested. This means that the artificial shock must be applied to the note Do 48. So uh, become aware of your eyes seeing. Become aware of your ears hearing. Become aware of your nose smelling. Become aware of your taste buds tasting while sensing your body as one organic whole. But what is meant by an artificial shock? It is connected with the moment of the reception of an impression. The note Do 48 designates the moment when an impression enters our consciousness. Normally they enter very mechanically, World 48. It's the habitual and mechanical realm. Uh, it's a realm of where we're an automatum. An artificial shock at this point means a certain kind of effort made at the moment of receiving an impression. It has been explained before that in ordinary conditions of life, we do not remember ourselves. We do not remember, that is, we do not, and I've put the word sense here, I've added it, and I've put that little line through feel, is that we do not sense ourselves, are not aware of ourselves at the moment of a perception, of an emotion, of a thought, or an action. Sense your body. Become aware of your body as one organic whole. Sense your body from the bottom of your feet to the top of your head, side to side, front to back, inside out. Uspensky has led to more misunderstanding of what goes on in this process by mistranslating this concept with the word feel. Someone can tap me on the shoulder and say, hey, did you feel that? And it's a limitation of the language, uh, of the English language that we use. We can use the same word to denote two different things. Mr. Gurdjieff, in one of the talks he gave in New York, said that English has a, you know, there's a poverty of the English language in that feel can mean feel and it can also mean sense. And he explains in that lecture um, the difference. And this is to prevent us from going wrong at this point. This is the sensation of self. Um, going back to the alchemy, the human body on the left, the, the octave of food, we are capable of, everyone on this planet is capable of producing La 24. La 24 is the molecule involved in sensation, the mindful awareness, say, of our hands, in being personally conscious of our physical body. Everyone on this planet transforms C12 and they misuse C12. They don't use it lawfully, which is to become aware of the sensation of self. But we can all produce this energy. We can't produce. And we do not all produce a similar energy at the level of um, 
Bothwell of the octave of air. If we were speaking of feeling in this context, he would have used feeling. It would mean the the uh, Bothwell, um, but it's Lothwell, and so many problems have come from the misunderstanding of the word whips uh, of using the word feel translating it that way by uspensky if a man understands this and tries to remember himself every impression he receives while remembering himself will so to speak be double in the in an ordinary psychic state i simply look at a street but if i remember myself I do not simply look at the street. I sense that I am looking as though saying to myself, I am looking. Instead of one impression of the street, there are two impressions, one of the street and another of myself looking at it. This second impression produced by the fact of remembering myself, the sensation of self, the awareness of my physical body as one organic whole, these two combined is the additional shock. Moreover, it very often happens that the additional sensation connected with self remembering brings with it an element of emotion. That is the work of the machine attracts a certain amount of carbon 12 to the place in question. And, uh, um, uh, whoops. So he's speaking specifically here. Whoops. Let me, I didn't mean to stop sharing that. He is speaking specifically here of sometimes it happens that it brings this molecule into play. This is the carbon that me 12 or me 48 of the octave of air needs to transform at the level of me uh, things come to a stop and outside shock is needed and so he's talking about this specific thing where i have the plus um so um whoops all right alan yes a uh, quick question why, why is he calling that one a carbon as opposed to a hydrogen because it's already it's a hydrogen but by the use of carbon he's it's already present i mean the the elements that we need for the higher to blend with the lower are usually present within the body um you know let, let ask me that question next week and i'll go much more into it um i just want to i want to try and get through this so i'll go i'll unpack this a bit more next week and talk about the second conscious shock carbons are what are whatever already in the body and one of the reasons i'm highlighting this quote here is the morning sitting the exercise that i have on youtube is one of the ways we get this carbon for the octave of uh, air, of emotions to continue. Through conscious breathing, we bring, I'll, I'll, actually that's in, this, in what I'm gonna be talking about today. Um, so that is the work of the machine attracts a certain amount of carbon 12 to the place in question. Efforts to remember but themselves, but I put these numbers in. One, observation of oneself at the moment of receiving an impression, two, a observation of one's impressions at the moment of receiving them to be registering so to speak the reception of impressions and to see the simultaneous defining of the impressions received so one the observation of self this is the sensation of self this is law 24 the awareness of my physical body here and now in this moment 2a is the observation becoming aware not mechanically but mindfully with that self-reflectivity and level of personal consciousness observing what's coming in through your eyes through or observing what you can see here smell and taste and then 
to be is registering them. So I am receiving a visual impression. I am receiving a, 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 a sound impression. I'm receiving a smell impression. I'm receiving a taste impression. In other words, the registering, the awareness that I'm, oh, there's a sound, there's a sight. There's a smell. So this involves differentiating the four different kinds of head brain impressions we can receive, um, seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting. So I'm aware of my body as I receive an impression. I'm aware of the external impressions I'm receiving. And of those external impressions, I am aware of the visual impressions, the auditory impressions, the olfactory impressions, smell, the gustatory impressions, tastes. So see the simultaneous defining of the impressions received. So this is an explanation of self-remembering. Uh, all of this taken together doubles the intensity of the cert of the impressions and carries Do 48, that's of the octave of impressions, to Ray 24. At the same time, the effort connected with the transition of one note to another and the passage of 48 itself to 24 enables Do of the third octave of impressions to come into contact with me, 48, that's of the octave of air, and to give this note the requisite amount of energy necessary for the transition of me to fa. In this way, the shock given to Do 48 also extends to me 48 and enables the uh, second octave to develop. Um, going back to this, if we move um, to the middle diagram, see if I can get it even closer. So what he's saying is that for Do 48, here in the middle, instead of coming to a stop as it does in a normal human being on the left, when we become aware, conscious, not conscious, mindful of receiving an impression, and not just mindful of receiving an impression, mindful of receiving a visual, an auditory, an olfactory, and or a gustatory taste impression. By doing this, we actually give this Do48, which over on the left doesn't go anywhere. As J.G. Bennett says, this is enough to be the automaton. This is enough for great nature. But when we bring that process to Do48, it gives it the energy to move up, and it actually gives it the energy to move to Mi12, and it gives the energy for Mi48 to move up to Fa, which then can move up to So, which then can move up to La. So, this process of self-remembering, and here it involves this, the sensation of the body, and this. When you receive, when you are aware of receiving an impression, when you are mindful of receiving your eyes receiving visual impressions, your ears receiving auditory impressions, your nose receiving gustatory impressions, your taste buds receiving olfactory impressions. It's the equivalent of sensing. It requires the transformation. It, it requires this, this act of being conscious of my eyes seeing, of being mindful of the light coming into my eyes and my eyes seeing is Ray 24. That is the fuel for the mindful receiving of impressions. The fuel to sense my hands is La 24. So La 24 and Ray 24 are required. And somehow we have the carbon within us for the dough 
uh, 48 to go up to that level because we can do this. We can become mindful of what our eyes are seeing, mindful that it's receiving visual impressions. We can become mindful that our ears are hearing, mindful that they are receiving auditory impressions, mindful of our nose smelling, mindful of our taste buds tasting. So, you know, there's all those steps involved, but it's this link. This is what self-remembering is. It involves the simultaneous awareness of our physical body as one organic whole, the sensation of self, and the mindful awareness of receiving, our eyes receiving light, our ears receiving sound, our nose receiving air, and our taste buds receiving tastes. And this gives DOE 48 the necessary energy to allow the octave of air to move up. And with self-remembering, this diagram, let's see if I can get rid of all of these, this diagram in the middle, this is self-remembering. Um, let's uh, uh, go back. Um, sure. So this is man as he is born. This is the alchemical process that occurs after we self-remember. You can notice there's a massive growth in our being. If I superimpose the left one on the right one, the ones that have grown out of the right one could rightly be called the Kesjian body. This could be rightly called the astral body. Mr. Gurdjieff didn't like to use that term because there was so much misunderstanding in it um, so self-remembering it's the if you notice at the top i've got the first conscious shock over here air coming in at doe 192 this is the first mechanical whoops shock um, sorry i meant to go to my controls um, So this is the first mechanical shock over here. This is the one nature provides to allow the octave of food to develop up to C12. And I've talked in previous meetings about the misuse of C12, how we waste that. And this is actually slightly wrong in a sense because it only comes up to this level. Um, I should uh, take this out. Um, this is what the human machine normally produces. And then this, whatever it is over here, um, whoops, this, where I'm circling, this can represent the Kesjian body. Um, so, whoops, um, it's a lot to take in. Um, let me go back. Whoops. I, it's, Sorry, this technology sometimes. Are we still in the screen with the uh, diagrams? Yeah, okay, I'm getting a thumbs up. Okay, whoops. Um, oh, I know what's happened. I've lost my other one. Just give me a second. Um, so take a moment to sense your body. Take a moment to become aware of your physical body as one organic whole. Um, okay, I'm gonna stop sharing. I think I accidentally clicked out. Ah, here it is, just give me a second to get back. Um, um, so, uh, step one is cleaning up the physical body. We have a factory where the, you know, union steward has told everyone to put their, you know, tools down because management is so mean to them. And management is mean and unpleasant because their wife was having an affair and the janitor just doesn't want to. And it's like this machine is not working properly. 
it's dirty, it's not oiled properly, uh, and there are very specific ways that this is dirty. You know, the unnecessary and unpleasant emotions, the expectation of unpleasant things possible and impossible, the sky is falling. Um, our whole political system is based on fear. You watch at election times and they talk about, oh, if you vote for them, the economy is going to tank. And others, if you vote for them, we're going to become worker serfs and they're going to take away our rights. And so this expectation of unpleasant things possible and impossible. And a lot of people walk around expecting the worst. And a lot of times it's purely in their imagination that, uh, you know, it's nothing that's really going to happen to them. On bad moods, you know, oh, they're not person and, uh, and people just walk around seething in these bad moods. Unnecessary haste. Mr. Gurdjieff tried to get people to hurry, hurry and hurry, but he didn't try to get them to hurry from the start when he told Fritz Peters as a 12 year old boy that he wanted these lawns mowed. Fritz Peters got it finally down to being able to do it in four days and doing it properly. And then Mr. Gurdjieff said, now do it in two. And then we got it down to two. Mr. Gurdjieff said, now do it in one. But first he had to learn how to do it. First he had to master it. And then he had to speed up. For most people, they just do things a little too quickly. And then they don't pay attention to what they're doing and they make mistakes. Um, another way we, we do this is through nervousness. Um, a lot of people just expend a lot of energy by being nervous. Uh, irritability, people are just irritable. Uh, we also waste it on imagination. And there is a lower form of imagination and there's a higher form. Higher imagination is actually, he uses as another term, active being mentation. Um, so when we actually use it properly to imagine scenarios and rehearse them in our mind, we are doing it properly, but so much of our imagination is just ego-based. It's a misuse of C12. It's a wrong working of the machine. Um, then the wrong work of centers. Um, he talks about, you know, thinking is hydrogen 48. Feeling should be hydrogen 12. When we try to feel with our mind, we are trying to use this higher energy in a lower way. It's like putting, you know, um, jet fuel in a car and uh, it's not working with the proper energy. A big one is unnecessary tension of the muscles. Um, you know, I've caught myself so many times washing dishes. I don't have a dishwasher, washing dishes by hand. And I swear I'm washing dishes with my jaw and it's like, relax my jaw, the unnecessary tension of mus muscles, perpetual chatter. Um, in another section in uh, chapter nine, he also talks about perpetual, uh, the rotating thoughts that go around in our head, perpetual chatter, interest continually in uh, taken in things happening around us or other people, or having in fact no interest whatsoever. You know, we spend an inordinate amount of our attention on things that are just useless. Um, so here, the constant waste of the force of attention. Um, and, um, you know, here, the, you know, we must, this energy, we can really change ourselves at the lower level, but this energy is not enough and we must increase the energy produced. And we do that through the first conscious shock. Um, so I've got some other things, I think, down here. Oh, no, I don't. Um, so I'll just stop sharing. Um, we're just, you know, a, a few minutes away from the end. I've covered a lot of material in uh, uh, today. I will be going a little bit over more of it uh, next week. And next week I'll be talking about, as well as the first conscious shock, the second conscious shock. But the first conscious shock. Um, Actually, let me go back to that one, as defined by Mr. Gurdjieff, um, just in the last few minutes. Um, just so we can be aware of all of the steps involved. Whoops, it's way down here. And I can't just scroll down. Um, 
Okay, I'm almost there. Um, so, efforts to remember oneself. One, the sensation of self, the awareness of our physical body, the awareness of the sensation of our self. This is the utilization of Ba 24 of the octave of food. When we sense our body as one organic whole, in this moment we are not misusing C12, we are using it lawfully, the sensation of our self. This is something that every human being on this planet can do naturally. It's where the inner work starts. The beginning of our inner work is a very complex process, but step number one is to become aware of your physical body as one organic whole. So J.G. Bennett's 60-point exercise, George Adi's exercise, those are all designed to build up this awareness of the physical body as one organic whole, or what Mr. Gurdjieff's called the sensation of myself or the sensation of self. This is the prerequisite for self-remembering. Then to the observation of one's impressions at the moment of receiving them. So observing what you see, observing what you hear, observing what you smell, and observing what you taste. And then two, B, registering, so to speak, the reception of impressions. And this is to see, so simultaneously defining of the impressions received. So the sensation of myself, oh, my eyes are seeing this. Oh, look what my ears just heard. Hmm, look at, smell that smell, taste that taste. So differentiating at the moment what you, differentiating between the impressions that you see, that you hear, that you smell and that you taste. So you're walking down the street. You're aware of your body walking. You're aware of how you land on your heel, push off with your ball and toes, the movement of your various joints and whatever. And you hear uh, a bang. And while remaining aware of your body, you go, ah, my ears are hearing a bang. I'm hearing sound. You're differentiating that from the sky and the trees and the grass around you which you're also aware of. Oh, I'm aware of the tree. I'm aware of the grass. I'm aware of the sound. Here in Canada, it's fall. The leaves are on the ground. There's a very special smell that comes with the leaves on the ground and the de decaying of leaves. Oh, I'm aware of smelling that. So all of this taken together doubles the intensity of what we receive. So this is the definition one definition of self-remembering. One, the sensation of myself. Two, the observation of impressions, registering those impressions, the reception of impressions, and defining the impressions received into one of four categories, seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting. And by doing this, we are actually, this, this process is ray 24 it's fueled by a specific molecule on the level of the planetary realm on the uh level of um uh the mindful level on the level you know of the psychic dimensions of our being and together the molecule law 24 the sensation of self and ray 20 the law 24 is number one of this and ray 24 is these three components being aware of what we see registering those so being aware of them and defining them visual auditory uh smell and taste at any rate uh, i've run out of time um very very important chapter if you understand this everything else that mr gurdjieff in his life Everything else that he taught makes sense. It all comes down to this chapter, and this is why he did not invent his system. It's not cobbled together from this place and this place and this place. It can all be grounded in this chapter. This is the ancient science of transformation. I've just gone a little over. I'd like to thank those of you, um, Brian, Karen, Hisham, and Ian. I know Angelica, because of the uh, time change, can't stay for the whole meetings. Um, 
for the next six, six months, I suppose. And then when we move back, you will be able to. But uh, thank you all for being here. And uh, self-remember, be aware that this is a wonderful, intricate process and in all of the different things that are going on. Um, so I'd like to uh, oops, thank you all for being here. And uh, hopefully I'll continue this next week, uh, including the second conscious shock. So uh, bye until then. Bye for now.